So from what I remember, David, the, uh, the electromagnet is actually a trailer brake. It is. It come out of a, tri uh, a dual axle trailer and replace the brakes. <laughs> um, oh, I lost the... No, no big deal, man. I think it's exactly like five foot one. Five foot one is what the crane is. Yeah. And the boom is four feet from here to here. Yeah. Another like foot and a half out here. The camera angle does not capture it as always, my friend. Everybody, welcome back to the RC Spark Studio. For those that know, David Jr., my good friend, is back. He's been doing a whole bunch of things uh, this season out uh, being a camp counselor. Yep. Yeah, where was your camp? Um, west uh, Red Deer, Central Alberta. And what were your responsibilities at camp, really? What were you there to do? I was there to cabin lead like two weeks out of summer, but yeah. the rest of the time I was leading activities such as mountain biking and rock climbing and rappelling, yeah. whitewater canoeing, so. Being an example for other kids. Exactly. So how long do you think you've been on the show doing RC adventures with us? Well, how old were you when you started? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's I been can like say six years. he was 13 years old when I first met you. That's six years. Yeah, that's exactly right. And here you are all these years later, still doing amazing build projects, yeah? Yeah. One of the projects that we had worked on in the past was building the crane you guys just saw. And it was one of our most epic adventures, I would say one of them, yeah. uh, where you really kind of delved into an area that you had never done before. Yeah, yes? this was totally out on our limb. You must have been doing lots of studying on how cranes were built and assembled. Oh, totally. Yeah? Yeah, and lots. So, this is one of a kind almost, but just scaled down from a larger version. Exactly. Nice. Utilizes lots of the same concepts. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember having the dinner at your place with your folks and Jem and I before Morris was there discussing building the crane? I do. Yeah, it was fun. It was a big, big deal. And there was, we had lots of fun with the crane. Um, you even introduced a new a concept for us to see, which was the electromagnet, which is incredibly strong. And we're going to see that again here today. Would you do us a favor and kind of go over the crane itself sure. and let us know exactly what we're looking at now that they know the size of this model? Where do you want to start? Well, I guess at the cockpit, hey? This is where everybody would be, this, where, the, where the operator sits. Yeah. How did you make the cockpit? The cockpit is all three, yeah, three millimeter plexiglass. Yeah. Um, styrene, clear styrene, and I just heated, bent the main piece, and then these pieces are just flat. <laughs> the rest of it's all brazed, actually from an old umbrella. All this down here. Yeah. So the mesh itself, do you remember where you sourced that? That I just got at, I think it was Walmart. It was okay. one of those mesh garbage cans because you can buy a huge one and then you got a whole bunch of mesh to work with. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can find your materials anywhere when you're looking and trying to be creative with RC, yeah? Yeah, and it's perfect. It looks like a proper mesh grading you'd see on an industrial equipment. So even the safety uh, bar for the ramp that the fellow climbs down, I'm going to have to build a giant ladder, would you say, so we can that get up there and climb up? A rope ladder? Yeah. So let me see here on the back. So everyone's going to want to know, now that we've covered the cockpit, well, here, let's look at the back. So this, this is like the main control area. We've got two Tekken FXRs. This is a 120 switch that operates the electromagnet off of a servo from down here, okay. which happens in the cab. Yeah. The receiver sits down here, and this is just the main control area. Okay, and so what uh, radio did we decide to go with overall? We originally used the DX8, mm -hmm. and now we're on the DX18. The DX18 definitely was fitting uh, what we needed. We didn't need to use all 18 channels, but it definitely gave us the opportunity to uh, have all the channels we needed, right? Yeah. Lots of programmability in there too. Lots of programmability, that's exactly right. So motors, let's talk about motors on this thing because people are gonna wanna know strength and you know, like can, how much can it lift and all that kind of thing. What, sure. what did we engineer out? So this, we'll start at the main, this is the main um, motor system to draw the, whatever we're lifting up and down. Right, so it's the boom, the boom wire itself, the yeah. cable. Originally we had a big brushless outrunner on here. It yeah. was substantial That's in size. Right. But it, 450 kV, I remember. Yeah, uh, it just didn't, again, have enough gearing. This rig, when I originally built it, um, it worked, but we needed more gearing. So we put in a super shafty axial built transmission. Bulletproof transmission, hey? Yeah. Super shafty has some amazing, in fact, this was the first project where I had heard of super shafty before. Uh, and really this transmission, from what I understand, as they say, bomb proof. Yeah, it's supposed to take anything you throw at it. Cool. Um, we got a Tekken T8, what is this one? 1700 kV 
brushless motor. Right, lots of torque. I believe these are four pole. Yes. Um, just yeah, insanely torquey, and it's sensored to a Tekken RX-8, which just gives us all the control that we could ever need, and the speed to lift. Exactly. Uh, As you're lifting heavier items, right, it'll stall out the motor, so you need that extra. Even if you're not using the speed, right. it needs to be able to throw that extra power. The at RX-8 it. can handle the amount of power. That's right. What are these on the back? These are just weight plates. They actually come off a rototiller, uh, front, <laughs> um, but they fit the, the shape really well. It and sure does. Eight of them. Yeah. So we can really. That's that eight works. different plates for the amount of weight yeah. that we're lifting. I think they're as each well. two pounds. Right. If I remember correctly, and that's how real cranes work, right? They've all got a counterweight. That's Their right. Their counterweight actually moves in and out. Yeah. So that they can adjust how much they're lifting. They set it to a certain point. We have to manually set on here um, the amount of weight for how much we're lifting, and then that'll. And that keeps all of it, all the weight straight down on the system rather than pulling side to side. Because a crane would never be able to lift if it was pulling off. Counter. Correct, that's right. Or turn, right? Because we'd have too much uh, too much weight Resistance. on one side. Yeah, and the resi that's exactly right. So offset, we also sneak in the battery back there. I'm running it off a three cell, 5,000 right, milliamp yeah. uh, uh, LiPo. No big deal, has plenty of juice yeah. up to the front. This is actually quite ingenious how he did this. Could you explain what this little socket piece is for? So this is the main drive for the pivot system. This okay. is what we updated since last Last time the crane was on the show. Yeah. And this was the best way I could come up with originally on how to get it to pivot. So this actually drives off of a 18 volt Dewalt XRP motor. transmission. Oh, the transmission. transmission, that's right. And it comes up through to a bolt that's been welded onto the other shaft. And then that allows us to lift the top off right. very easily. So this is. If just I hold your radio, off. will you demonstrate for us? Yeah. Thank you. So this comes off. And just lift it. The off. whole piece comes off only with one wire to unplug on the banana plugs there. Yep. And then that just unplugs super easy and it's very easy to transport then. So focusing on the middle part, David, uh, with the Dewalt transmission that's in there, what was actually changed to slow this down? So originally we had the Dewalt motor mounted right in here. Right. And it worked great. It was a five slot, big brushed motor. So lots and lots of torque, lots and lots of control. Um, whereas most of the RC motors we run are called a three slot. You'll have to Google that. I'm not going to explain it. It's kind of complicated. Yeah. So what I went and did was, yeah, this side will be better to see. Went and took an axial transmission and this is a, a cheap mod you could do to your stock outputs to make them stronger or upgrade to six millimeter outputs. As you take the stock cast aluminum outputs, I think these ones are steel. The yes, ones are. yes. And you drill them out from the back. You take them right out, drill them out. So I drilled them out to exactly six mil and got them just about straight. The top one is like half a millimeter, a quarter millimeter out. The bottom one is perfect. So I had to rubber mount it up here just because it has a tiny wobble. Um, and then I ran, I drilled a hole straight through this shaft down in, in the transmission, ran a pin through where the bearing rides and the bearing actually captures that pin and holds it in place so that well, as it turns, it's never going to move. <laughs> and then this plate was designed just to mount the transmission. And this is not the original plate off the motor. I tried to use that, but I ended right. up breaking it. Right. It's, it was just cheap. Well, it's not cheap, but it's cast and it's cast isn't super strong when I took all the other structure away from it. So this was actually out of a different Dewalt drill that I took apart just for this piece. And now it all hangs on there very well. It'll, I had the killer crawler on the very end, which is what, 38 pounds, yep. I think fully loaded. Yep. And I was able to pivot it all the way around with it on the very end, and that's when there's the most stress. I was actually standing on the plate so it wouldn't tip the crane over. So ballpark 40 pounds? Um, I'd say right around the 30, 35. Nice, and what do we think, or what do we know actually is the lifting capacity of the crane? I've lifted 52 pounds. Nice. That was really maxing it out, and yeah. we had more pulleys on at that time. Yeah. I think we were running three pulleys on the bottom because there's enough pulleys up top here to add in more pulleys. Yes. To just, and that every time you add another pulley set, that doubles your pulling capacity. You already knew what the viewers were thinking. What, to, what are the pulleys actually for? Very cool. So then we're going to go up to the front of the boom here where there's actually a 35 turn brushed motor as well. Yeah. With a carriage that slides up and down. Can you explain how this was designed? So this was designed very simply on a worm drive system. I tried a belt drive and a rope drive and nothing really worked. But this worm drive was very, very strong and very resilient for a lot of weight. Sure. This is a very, very basic worm drive where it's just quarter inch threaded rod. Yeah. And there is a long nut 
up in top here, right here. Sure, yeah. In a little collar, and it'll move back and forth like that. Yeah, so the nut is actually just being screwed on and off of that threaded rod. Yeah, it just gets screwed back and forth. It's raised into a pinion on the front here, right off the motor, and it just moves it back and forth. It's very, very simple, low maintenance, and strong. Amazing. The suspension bridge itself, you went and brazed all these loops in? Yep, everything was just straight rod. And this is actually a covered cable. It's plastic, but it is a wire cable on the inside. Yep. Yeah. There's not much weight that's put on the main pivot back here. Okay. It's not super structural either. It's There's lots of structure there, but it's not strong enough to lift 50 pounds. Sure. That 50 pounds gets transferred into these, which comes up to the main tower. And then with the offset weight, it comes straight, straight down the center. That's really cool. You know, everybody has heard of the electromagnet and some of the viewers here that are new may never have seen it work before. Oh, we can act can you actually give us a demonstration here? I could do it, but I think the engineer who built this should definitely give it a swing. Look at that. The magnet is operational. So from what I remember, David, the, uh, the electromagnet is actually a trailer brake. It does come out of a tri uh, dual axle trailer, and that's how they engage the brakes on a trailer. Yeah, is through the magnetics. Right, that actuates the brake. And we took this out. I tore down to just the magnet itself, which gets warm when you use it. Yes. And then as you apply power, it creates heat, a lot of heat, and a magnetic field, and allows you to grab. Amazing. Quit Show it. them that again. Let's hear. Let's lift this. Ah, there we go. Hooking it on there. Okay, show them the button that we've switched it up to on the DX18. So it's just hooked up to the gear switch. Right. It could be hooked up to a number of these switches, but that's the one we chose. And when I flick that switch, if you want to come up here. Sure. Um, just because it's a simple on off. Yes. I didn't want to use just an ESC, so we used a <laughs> servo on a switch. Turns the light on. Like a so light switch. The operator can tell it's on. <laughs> you can see the magnet is on from the light and how the servo is actually moving down there, pulling the on off cord. Yep. Activating the uh, the magnet itself. And, then you can lift it up. and that's two pounds. Yep. And it'll easily lift the bigger brick. Shall we get out the 17 pound brick and see if this small string can actually hold the weight? Sure. Dave, do you remember building this for the judge? Yes, I do. It is 17 pounds, correct? Yeah. Can you tell us what this is actually made out of? This is two C channel. Pieces. Yeah. You can see the weld seam down here. I cleaned it up fairly good, but you can still see. Yeah. It. They're welded together. I welded an end cap on, which is like half inch steel. Sure. And then I filled it with actually steel pellets. So when they build that's large what it is. Machinery, they use. I don't think they do it anymore, but they used to punch the holes in the frames. And this will be an inch thick, half an inch thick, really thick metal. So you get all these pellets, and yeah. I got a bunch of them and filled them with that, and then filled them with sand. Right. Get as much density as I could. Welded the other end on and it took forever to cool down because sand holds the heat. Oh yeah. Shall we lift it up onto the uh, 3D printed semi truck here? You think, we'll have to set it on there fairly good. Yeah, exactly. This yeah, was- we'll Put some more weight on the back. This one was sent out uh, by my buddy Cran Killen. Uh, shout out to him. He was my inspiration to actually building this entire crane with David. Remember that? I do. We called it the Cran Killen Crane Dude um, as a uh, tribute to one of our friends who actually got the very first RC Sparks tattoo. You heard that right. <laughs> yep. David, let's lift the block, brother. Okay. And now that we've reduced the gearing in there, David's able to get in a little bit easier. Still yeah. a challenge if you don't have a lot of practice with it, but here we go. 17 pounds. Raising it up, swinging it over. Just amazing. And it's a 2200 3S LiPo right now. Uh, 2200 milliamp hour, 25C discharge. It's actually running just the electromagnet by itself. David doing his very best to get it lined up. Nice, right over the back axle. Dude, that is so sweet. High five, that's awesome. That was first time too. Yeah, you did awesome, buddy. 
It's nerve wracking being on the show, trying things for the first time, but when it's so cool like this, you know, what can I say other than thumbs up, man? Great job. Thank you. It's like my little brother that's working with me. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Black Widow, uh, the, the judge. <laughs> the judge overkill that we worked on together and of course the crane and of course we're always thinking of new things and new ways to have fun and inspire you guys that are watching the show thank you so much for coming in today you're welcome thank you for taking the time to help make this show what it is today and for you know inspiring others including myself every time you're here guys Give a, give a light click for David Jr. here, who's always dedicated so much time. His family's always been great to Gemini, and we've been lucky to have him in the RC Spark studio and on camera with you guys, eh? Yeah. There you go. All right, Thanks. guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Guys, get outside and have fun with RC. You know you can do it. Now go.